Well, good evening, and thank you very much indeed for such a nice introduction. Thank you both Karen and uh, Marcy for, for inviting me to do this tonight. And uh, thank you all for tuning in uh, to listen into this and to watch into this. Um, my name is Chetan Parkin. Uh, you can probably tell from my accent I didn't always live in Southern California. Um, I actually grew up in jolly old England. I grew up in the farm in the countryside, beautiful countryside. And uh, one thing led to another. I went to engineering school, qualified as a mechanical engineer. And uh, in those days, I thought that was the obvious thing to do and uh, didn't get any guidance to do otherwise. But I found out fairly early on that uh, I'm very much a right brain person and engineering is very much a left brain kind of thing. So um, I had a very different way of looking at engineering problems. Anyhow, um, one thing led to another. I was a troubleshooting engineer. Uh, I had funny ways of fixing things, so people would fly me all over the world to go and fix things. And um, I was in India and was guided to go and have a reading with this man that lived in Bombay. I was told that this man would tell me everything about myself. And uh, sure enough, he did. Uh, some of the details of, of this reading are in the book. Um, but he basically laid bare the whole picture of my life and told me, oh, well, engineering's not really going to work for you so much longer. Uh, you're actually going to start reading for people. And um, my suggestion to you is, because there's a system coming that you're going to be working with, and my suggestion is that you start learning how to talk to people in terms of giving them personal details about their life. Well, I was a bit shell-shocked with this reading anyhow, that he was telling me all about myself. But I followed through on what he said, and I started reading people's hands. It was a little bit like looking at a blueprint. And I would... For about 10, 12 years, I read people's hands. Anybody that was brave enough to hold their hands out in front of me, I'd read them. And I would ask them for feedback. And if I said this about this part of your hand, you know, what would you say back to me? And slowly, slowly, I developed a means of interacting with people um, that somehow um, was able to tell people a lot about themselves and their lives. But um, in 1987, this human design system came into being. And I didn't know about it at the time. It actually didn't come into my life until 1993, when it first came to America. But when I saw a chart, I knew immediately this is what this man in Bombay had told me about. And this was a system I was going to be working with. And it's called the human design system. And human design, it's something very much in tune with these times. I put out the motif. It was my wife came up with the idea. She's a 30-year astrologer, but she came up with this idea. Well, why don't we just say, you know, forget your, forget your sign. What's your design? And so it's just a little catchy phrase, but all of us know something about our astrology. But what we found is, unless you're an expert in astrology, it's all a little bit vague. Um, two people that have the same sun sign can be living extraordinarily different lives and you can't really explain why that's the case unless you go deeply into their astrology or find an astrologer who's very good at it. And so what we say about human design is it's a new astrology for these fast changing times and I will tell you why I'm saying that. It, it's actually more than astrology in that it's not so much looking at the predictive side of things but it's indicating to you exactly how you're designed to live out your life and, and deal with anything that confronts you. Essentially, it's a system that it, we might say it was channeled, it was inspired, it came to somebody and didn't come with any instructions. Uh, we've been working out exactly how it works ever since. And in the book, and particularly in the trainings that we do, we've distilled it down to um, what we call the three keys. And so, in a moment when I show you a chart that comes with the human design, everybody has a chart that's specific for them. And very easy to make out in that chart are what we call these three keys. And learning these three keys will help you guide your life 
with precision. So a little bit of an understanding about your human design chart and you'll see what makes your life work just perfectly. And you'll see exactly why you interact well with, other, with some people and you don't get on so very well with other people. But once you understand that, you can see how to rearrange things so that the clear lines of communication open up for everybody. So here we have this question for this time, are you living your design? Everybody has a perfect design. It's one of those amazing things that when we're born, we've been incubating for a number of months and we come out into the world and in that moment we come into the world we have conscious access to everything that's going on around us. So we may just think, oh well, you know, we're being born in a particular room, but actually into that room is coming, what can I say, information from all corners of the universe. It's almost like the moment at which you're born, it's like a snapshot of the universe energetically. Of course, we can't see all these things that are coming in necessarily, but science is beginning to measure these things now. So if you find out what that moment is that you came in at, and you draw up your human design life chart, you're able to see exactly, specifically to you, what the universe intended for you at that moment, to, to put it in very simple terms. And so once you understand the particular design that you've come in on, you can go through your life in a sense of being completely assured. This is who I am. This is who I am designed to be. And this is the life I'm here to live. And so all the questions of, well, should I be doing this or should I be doing that, they all start to dissolve. Because all, what you're left with is a complete assurance of who you are. Another thing that happens with the human design, which is completely revolutionary, is that not only can we see our conscious makeup, what it is we're here to live out on a conscious way in our lives, but we also get the genetic input of everything that we've inherited, not only from our parents, but from grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, the whole family story is part of this human design life chart that we get. So I always tease people and say, oh, well, you know, what we deliver in a click of a mouse in putting up your chart is equivalent to about 10 years on a psychiatrist's couch, winkling all these things out of you, all these characteristics that are embedded because of the genetic family that you come through. And I, you know, I just want to say there's nothing good or nothing bad about anything here. It's all, you know, all of us carry whatever it is we need to carry from our forefathers. And we come here to live out our life. And of course, the great trick about life is to turn anything that's unconscious into something that's conscious. And with human design, we can actually see the map of how to go about that. So once you start getting really comfortable in your own life, of course, there's the great possibility of having great relationships with other people as well, because you're being very authentic at all times in your own way. And so we say, create a life that you can be in love with. What a revolution that is.